Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, Antonelli here. Hey, guys, one here. Let's go over who is easily one of my favorite throwers in the entire game for a number of different reasons. I truly believe that smaller athletes and smaller professional athletes give you more answers than larger ones. There's a reason why smaller guys, let's just take pitchers for example. There's a reason why smaller guys are able to throw 95 miles an hour and they are going to give you more answers on how to move correctly than somebody like a Garrett Cole. And it doesn't mean that Garrett Cole doesn't move well, but if mass times acceleration equals force and that force is applied onto the baseball and that equates as velocity, when somebody is already six foot seven, 245 pounds like Noah Syndergaard, he already has the force part down. So he doesn't have to accelerate as well or as much to throw 95 miles an hour compared to somebody like Marcus Stroman. Somebody like Marcus Stroman, somebody like Sonny Gray, those guys, they not only have to accelerate at a high rate to create more force, but then they have to be very pinpoint with the way they sequence their mechanics from the bottom on up onto the baseball in order to be consistent. Being small is very difficult. So those elite guys, those elite throwers that are professionals who are on the smaller side relative to other major leaguers, but in the grand scheme of it, let's do, like Walker Bueller is 6'2", 180. Like Walker Bueller is still probably a pretty strong dude if he were to walk into your living room right now. But relative to other pros, guys like Walker Bueller and Marcus Stroman and Sonny Gray are smaller and they have to do more things right in order to be consistent and in order to produce velocity onto their throws. So I really, really love looking at smaller athletes because again, smaller athletes give you more answers. So let's just dive into Stroman and let's just do a little quick breakdown on Stroman and why he is so freaking good. Now we are at the beginning of his lift. And as we get into the lift, I want you to notice one thing about his lift. Right? The biggest thing about your front leg is the only reason my front leg comes off the ground is so my back leg can start working. So I like to tell guys, keep your front leg quiet. Your front leg comes to you. You don't go to it. It is not the dynamic mover within your movements. It is not the one that controls your movement. It literally gets out of the way so you can get that back leg going. And just before your front leg reaches its peak, whether you are a low kick guy, mid or high, so Stroman's relatively high, your back leg and your back hip and pelvis and hips, all of that should be beginning to coil, create tension, and begin its descension and drift towards the target, which in this case is home plate. So we see Stroman as he's getting down to the bottom of his delivery, couple things. His ability to sit into the back leg is unbelievable. Okay, so sitting into the back leg, is pretend like your glutes are sitting into a chair. So if I were to make a chair right here, well, let's do a, just a regular line. If I were to make a chair and he has to sit down in that chair, he's doing his best with that back leg to sit down into that chair. So that's sitting into your back hip, your back leg, your back glute. And he's doing just that. On top of that, you would like to have your back knee behind the toe, which it is, and dramatically here. So the more vertical my shin is, my back shin, the better position I'm going to be in to be as strong as I possibly can throughout my delivery. In order to balance that out, because your hips are drifting backwards, right, because you're sitting down, in order to balance that out, that front leg has to be out in front of your face. And the more that front leg is out in front of your face, the better your body can be balanced throughout its delivery. Now, he his handbrake happens in a very simple, very efficient and good spot. If you want to keep things as simple as possible for yourself and make them easy for yourself, you want your handbrake to be happening 
on the mid of your chest, the middle of your chest, to slightly even on the arm side. So if you can get slightly into the arm side, middle of your chest, that should be a very, very good, efficient spot to break your hands where you can be as consistent as possible with the rest of your delivery and the rest of your arm action. As we travel downhill, okay, he's able to sustain that back leg. So again, back into that seated position, we see how he's traveling downhill and we see how he's able to sustain that position of that back hip being strong and tense and sitting into it throughout his stride just before the front foot initiates rotation, which is going to be right there. Okay, so the front foot begins its rotation there. The second that front foot starts initiating rotation, then the back leg can come into internal rotation and start really rotating towards home plate. But prior to that happening, you want to be able to sit into this glute and travel towards home plate for as long as possible, keeping that back leg externally rotated towards the second base. Now, the front leg starts rotating, now the back leg follows, and they're going to mirror each other. The feet are going to mirror each other, and they're going to kind of rotate together. That front foot comes down, that back leg is all the way getting into rotation. Now, let's get that front foot into the ground. I like stopping guys with their front foot into the ground. This is hip-to-shoulder separation at its finest. We see that his hips are beginning to really fire open, but his arm is still back. His arm and his shoulders are still closed off. His chest is still parallel to the third baseman right now. Okay, on top of that, that arm slot, it's in a very good spot. It's very difficult to see from here, but his forearm, his forearm is lined up in this fashion. So like in a in a 45 degree angle, if I were to create a right angle here, his his forearms lined up around 45 degrees. It's in the middle of that and beginning its layback towards 90 degrees. So if that vertical line of the right angle is 90 degrees, his forearm is starting to travel back, as you see there, it's starting to travel back into that 90 degree spot of that right angle. Okay, so that's good efficient rotation and good efficient energy throughout his delivery. Now the rotation ensues now. Okay, so as the torso starts rotating, then that arm starts getting into layback and into the throwing zone. So again, set that 45 degree angle, the torso starts rotating, and as that torso starts rotating, the arm starts traveling back into that 90 degrees and getting into the throwing zone. I classify the throwing zone as just before it's about to reach the back of your head, and then as the arm goes through the head and past the head into pitch release, which is going to be right here. So in terms of sequence and rotation, the bottom, the feet go first, then the shin, then the knees, then the femurs, then the hips, right? And then the upper half resists all of that rotation. It, it resists it, and it stays parallel towards the third baseman, and then it, boom, fires through, right? That upper half fires through because it has no choice now. The legs have already committed. The hips have already committed. The upper half is just a byproduct. The rotation of the upper half is just a byproduct of the rotation of the lower half, right? So all that, boom, fires through into pitch release. We get to pitch release. We see a good, stiff, firm front leg. We see the hips are open and towards the catcher. We see the right shoulder leading the way so the shoulders are offset with the right shoulder ahead of the left and as we get into pitch release the torso is getting parallel to the ground right so that torso is getting chest over that front foot as the pitch is released he continues his rotation as we see here we're going to start seeing we're going to start seeing his number and the name of the back of his jersey because he does not cut his energy short and he continues to rotate throughout his delivery and he travels around that firm front leg okay with that throwing arm and the throwing hand starts chasing the glove the glove gets out of the way so my throwing hand can follow through over my hip and it's not crashing against the quad it's not crashing against my glove arm it's able to follow through in a very safe manner across my my glove side hip and I'm able to travel around that front leg so very, very great mover, an elite mover. Stroman's one of my favorites. 
Again, his ability to move with his ability to be creative as well. He is the king, I would say, of throwing off timing towards hitters, which at the end of the day is the goal. But if you can do that at 95 and you can do it with command and you can do it safely, those should be your motives and those should be your goals. Hope you liked the video. Hope you thought it was informative. Smash that subscribe button and I will see you guys later.